Hi guys, hello again, I'm Sethonan, I'm here, and this is the Daily Grind. This is Senseiya Awakening. I am using the Chinese server because I have access to most of the characters over here, and I just wanted to make a quick video about one of the very few decisions that GT Arcade has made in the short time that the Singapore version has been out, and now that the global one is out, at least I now have something to look forward. For starters, uh, you get the free Athena stamina recharges every day and they kept the cost down. In the Chinese server, you get two free recharges every day after the reset, but the third one starts costing diamonds like you paid, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, like you paid the 30 and 60 diamonds the first time around. So the third one costs 90 diamonds. And in the GT Arcade version, in the Singapore one, and I hope that this carries over to the global version, the third recharge starts again at 30 diamonds. That is a very, very smart um, business move. Or, at, or not so much that it is smart. It's one of the very few bones that they have thrown uh, the way of the free players. And I applaud that. Even though I don't agree with a lot of other things like the limited banners, the double banners, that you only get to know what the next character is going to be the day before the maintenance. I really hate that. And I'm surprised that uh, other YouTubers haven't touched on this. Because even if you are featured, uh, there are several YouTubers both in Spanish, in, in Portuguese, uh, in many other languages, in English even, that are on GT Arcade's payroll. Not that they offer much anyways, uh, but the thing is that <coughs> you cannot properly build hype for this game in the Singapore and global versions. Like, uh, I hate that GT Arcade tries to pretend that the original Chinese server doesn't exist and that the Taiwanese version doesn't exist. So they try, for some boneheaded reason, try to keep secret that some characters are going the, 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 are coming to the game. Um, but anyways. But today has been maintenance day in the Singapore version and another decision that I applaud in the part of GT Arcade is the fact that they added this guy to the summoning pool just like that and uh, along with Raimi that's the name of this uh, of this character Warm Raimi they also released Another of the Hades Spectres, or the Hades Raids, that is called Niobe Deep, the Earth Star or something like that. Because these characters in the Chinese version weren't limited per se, but they are A and B cards. And you could only access them by buying the Fighter Medal for those months. They were featured in, in very different months. Raimi is more recent than, than Niobe. And after the Fighter Medal ended, if you didn't buy that or you came to the game after their release, the only way to get these guys was to gather the shards until you could unlock them and then they got added to the summoning pool. So I only got them way after their release and they are very very good characters so it's super cool on GT Arcade's part because I can talk nice about the good things that the company does and this is one of those things instead of releasing them through the fighter medal in a limited fashion also even though I dislike that they added Gold Hyoga very early on before his meta was actually needed, at least now he is in the summoning pool, I think. So, uh, in the Chinese version, uh, on the contrary, Gold Hyoga is a very, very limited tune that you very rarely see unless you're fighting against a very heavy whale 
or a guy that is in one of the top alliances where their whales share the shards downwards. So I also applaud that on the part of GT Arcade. So now let's talk about Niobe Deep and Warm Rhyme. They are very fun units to have, even if they don't have an apparent utility um, and they are not meta in any way, shape, or form. They are very fun to use in certain compositions. For example, uh, Niobe is a poisoning unit and he works like this. He has a basic attack that does no special effect when you attack and it's a very very low uh, attack rating uh, maximized is just 80 percent of your cosmic attack rating the second one is the deep fragrance or deep perfume and this skill um, has a chance of sticking one poison stack to the enemy that lasts two turns and does 160% when it's maximized of your cosmic attack rating. The very interesting part is that if you have <coughs> uh, put a stack of poison on an enemy uh, already and it's about to expire or has a poison from other characters and they are about to expire like let's say for example I'm just throwing names out here Ichi Hydra or, I don't know, Aphrodite Pisces, or maybe, uh, uh, who am I thinking of? I don't know, China, who benefits from poison too, but has a very low chance of sticking poison to the enemy. Well, Niobe, when he uses the deep perfume, resets the duration of any poison stack on the enemy. And later on, for his passive, that's um, a small chance of causing damage on enemies that have poison stack. So, by himself, he's useless. It's a very, very crappy unit, but he has some very interesting stats for a B card, and he plays very heavily on. A very fun composition to use that again it's not meta you're not going to be winning galaxy with this <coughs> but if you remember Ichi and Shina are two of the fastest characters in the game only surpassed by Divine Cloth Pegasus but surprisingly Hydra Ichi or Hydra Ichi has one of the hardest hitting moves in the game his problem is that the enemy has to have five stacks of poison and this is not easy to, to do with only three characters that actually have poison. Um, Skill Aeo also has a chance of putting poison on the enemy but he's random and it's only a 25% of releasing that attack and has no special effect. But having Niobe in the same composition as Ichi and Shina allows you to very easily during the first round to stack four or even more stacks of, of poison on the enemy. And then you can use a move on Ichi that has a very, very heavy damage multiplier and it's physical so most of the of the heavy cosmic units don't have a very good physical defense rating so he's able to start one shotting people starting on round two and another skill on Hydra Ichi uh, when you use this skill and kill somebody with poison stacks the poison stacks move at random to another character so if you already have five stacks on somebody and you kill them with Hydra Ichi, then the five stacks move to another character, you can reset them with Niobe and start all over again. Also remember those other guys are two of the fastest characters in the game. So that allows for uh, some pretty crazy moves on, on that team's part. And of course you always have um, uh, Aphrodite to lower enemy defenses and stuff like that. 
and he's a pretty fast unit has so so defenses uh, but a, but a nice cosmic attack rating for a beaker and a good chunk of energy in fact i was planning on bringing him to level 70 and start testing again with him precisely because of this i i think he has more hp than doko at level 70 than doko has at level 80. well that's niobe he's fun but he doesn't have any good utility poison only reduces 20 percent of the attack rating of the character that has the stacks but you need five stacks of poison on the same character to get this effect so that's pretty complicated too and for the most part uh, the newest units have very crazy damage multipliers and then there's warm rhyme uh, the creator of this send the heal to the lowest health character when you perform the move and it's the first true attack healer in the game and also has some rather interesting skills like his basic is just a basic attack nothing fancy no special effect that's not why we want Raimi in our lineup But then he has a, a single energy point attack where he sends a tentacle down the ground that attacks a single opponent. But here's the catch. If you get to maximize this, the tentacle starts at a 20% chance of sticking to the character that you are attacking. At maximum skill, the damage is not very good. That's just a 60% of his attack rating but the tentacle gets a 100% chance of sticking which leads to this is just normal normal damage and it's rather low because he doesn't have a very good attack rating but the craziest part this is passive whenever the unit that has a tentacle is stuck to them moves when it's their turn again even if they are in control when their turns begins they get damage. The damage is absorbed as a heal that goes to Raimi. If Raimi is full of health, then the heal goes to the teammate with the lowest HP. And you can stick, when you maximize this skill, the tentacle, you can stick it three times on the same target or any combination. You can select three different people and stick a tentacle to each one of them. When that unit dies, you can stick the tentacle to a new unit and you can start sucking life very, very easily. Luna pairs wonderfully with Raimi and I'm just um, waiting on more repeats of him <coughs> to maximize his skills because I have seen him at high level and he does a pretty good chunk of damage like it's like Perseus Algol that shoots three random snakes and each snake does decent damage but is not going to kill anybody but if they gang up on the same guy at the same time that's a pretty heavy chunk well Raimi works that way too if you concentrate concentrate your tentacles on the same target you can uh, get an attack for almost half their health bar and the HP is, a star, is going to start when you heal it starts uh, spreading to your team very very quickly like his stat rating I don't have him uh, very high just level 70 like decent health again but very decent defenses on him and he's rather fast and it's very easy <coughs> to build a 400-450 Raimi and start using him as an offensive option that is also going to heal your team. If you bring him any kind of sustained or death protection like I don't know Saori, you have a pretty good option here. 
for for a free player, especially now that uh, these units are going to show up rather often. Like this guy is, is new. I haven't done a lot of, of summoning since the time he was made available in the Chinese server. But, but you can start seeing some of these guys pretty soon. And they are available for free, basically, because since they are A and B units, they eventually start showing up on your common uh, on your common summons and you will be able to max them rather fast so for example let's try here let's see if I get lucky and I get some repeats of them the Niobe likes to show a lot you're going to maximize him sooner than uh, well I got an A card but it's not uh, it's not rhyming. So next week when the Chinese server announces what the next banner is going to be, this is a bi week. We don't get weekly stuff over here. I think the 13th, 30th uh, season of Galaxy, oh it's not available yet because the month hasn't ended. So maybe next, uh, next maintenance we are going to get the frame for season 13 and that usually gives you a clue what the next banner is going to be. So, again, <clears throat> uh, that's all for this video. So, thank you guys. Thank you for returning to the channel, even though I haven't uploaded in a very long while. I'm very, very grateful for your preference and your wonderful audience. And I'm going to be back uh, uploading videos more often. And like I'm... I mentioned in the previous one, in the Pandora analysis in depth, um, I'm going to start putting links to my Patreon and the Twitch channel. I now have a Twitch channel. I'm still not an affiliate, so the, the streaming quality is not that good. I have a lot of trouble, uh, but I, I hope that you guys decide to support the channel and send some donations this way. They are not required, I'm still going to be uploading material like I have up until now, recording on the cell phone and getting the best tips, uh, like for example from Tofu Otaku, uh, is one of the strongest uh, guilds in Server 1, here in the Singapore version, and they have also moved on to the global one and they are still very very strong. And I have been bouncing ideas with some of their members and they together have discovered quite a lot of things, quite a lot of good compositions and tips for finishing the Saint Legends and stuff like that. Even though the, most of the strategies involve spending a lot of money because you have to get specific units, but it's very cool to have that kind of knowledge. I'm going to share that with all of you guys so you get a better experience so even if you don't donate I'm still going to be uh, uh, I'm going to continue to make material for the channel so don't worry about that I'm gonna be here until they shut down the last server so if you enjoy the content give a like to the video subscribe to the channel click on that little bell so you get a notification when I upload new material and See you again, see you next time, in the meantime, keep grinding on.